Yes, I did get it for free. I know that's a game changer. Like that is a game changer. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. I am super excited to bring you 10 things in my sewing room that just make sense. And I have done sewing room tours before, but the reason this one is different is because ever since I got one particular product, and you guys who have been watching me for a while, you might know what it is, but one particular product made me want to make my sewing space, my sewing studio, recording room, the ultimate in flexibility. And so I know that this video, no matter what your space size, and I mean that, no matter what your space size, there are going to be some ideas and some products that you may be able to use in your space to make it um, functional, to make it work for you to make it flexible. So let's get started. All right, this is my sewing space. This is actually a formal living room that I turned into a sewing space. I first took over the formal dining room. We only used it once for Thanksgiving. It was totally set up with the table and the hutch and all that stuff. And we weren't using it. So I was like, this is my house. Like you know, I need to use my own space. And so I took that over. And so now that back behind me is the recording space. I'll show you guys that in another video because you guys asked me, where do I store clothes? And that actually has something to do with that. So you'll see that then. But this space right here was a formal living room. And so now all the sewing goes on in here. My main sewing machines are the Sailrite Fabricator, the Burnett B77, and the Brother 1034D, which is my serger. Those are my main sewing machines. That's what I use on a regular basis. I also have the Brother Strong and Tough that I bring out if the burnet gets on my nerves because it is computerized. And then behind me, you'll see some other sewing machines that I will be testing very soon. There are four other sewing machines um, that you may see in this video that I will be testing very soon. So if you are interested in those, definitely stay tuned. All right, so number one, we're gonna kick it off with pegboards. If you can get your hand on some pegboards, they sell them all different types of places, but these in particular do come from Ikea. They have a bunch of accessories that go with them. I have them in three instances that I'm gonna show you. Right here has my serger thread. I do have, there's hooks here and the thread holder is just mounted to the hook. So super easy, have that hanging on the wall. I have another one on the other side of the room that has like a mallet, which if you do any type of grommets, you know you need a mallet. Um, so I keep it handy and close, as well as some other tools, paint brushes and stuff like that. Now, pegboards are not just for walls. Pegboards can be mounted to other types of things. So here you can see that I have it mounted to a wire shelving system. This is the alpha type shelf from the container store. I got it from Habitat for Humanity Restore. Look that up, see if you have one next to you. If you've never been, definitely check it out. It's for like the building supplies and furniture of like thrift stores. So it's a really great place to go. I got those for $14 a piece. If you've ever been to the container store, you know it costs a lot more than $14 originally. So I'm super lucky to get those. I have two of them and I'll talk about those in a second. But like I said, the Ikea system comes with a lot of different accessories. And so I have these cups up here, which if I am just going to have threads on the table, I can just brush them off. These cups are open. These have like pencils and stuff to mark. And then I have pins and clips and you know, all kinds of stuff down here that I need when I'm sewing and my mini ironing board right there. So if you are in an apartment where you can't hang things on the wall, if you guys saw when I was living in an apartment, I had it on these tables, had that thread on the tables, looks so amazing. So definitely don't shy away from pegboards just because you're renting space. Hang it on the side of something and you'll have a lot of space for your stuff. Next up, let's go back to talking about these wire shells. Like I said, I got them from Habitat for Humanity Restore. I like these because although it's a love-hate relationship, but I think it's something really good to have if you're the type of person where you forget some things that you have. And I there's a lot of sewers like that. Like we get stuff and then we don't see it again because if it's in an enclosed container or an enclosed drawer, then it doesn't exist. And so we can't remember where it is and we can't remember that we have it. And so we'll go out to Joanne Fabrics or the thrift store or whatever and buy it again. 
So if you've fallen prey to that, if you've been victim of that, then wire shelves are definitely the way to go because I can always see the things that I have in there. And I don't particularly try to keep it like, oh, it's like super aesthetic. You know, it's a little bit messy, they're wire drawers. But um, I do love the fact that, you know, they come in different sizes. I can put thread in them. I have my thread. You'll see another more aesthetic place to put thread, but I have my thread here in the second drawer right next to the main sewing machine. I do wrap my bobbins. I like this because it doesn't have to look super like aesthetic. So I can wrap my bobbins, the matching bobbin with the thread so that is definitely helpful for just grab and go and I have needles I have other things it's just craziness over here but at least it's put away and I never almost never forget what I have like I have but old buttons in here I have leather and suede I thrift a lot of leather and cut it up and save it for a later day it might have had a part of it like a leather coat or a suede coat that was messed up in just one portion cut off the good parts and you can like use that like it lasts a super long time so yeah that's what I have in those the one on the other side next to the serger it has extra fabric and different things in there like I said it's hard to forget what's in those drawers and hey if you're new here you haven't subscribed or you're old here and you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below the reason you subscribe is so that you know where to come for brand new up cycles brand new sewing machine reviews I have actually three four machines that I'm going to be reviewing very soon. Um, so you don't want to miss that as well as the amazing upcycles fashion content that is coming out very soon. So yeah, subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. All right, so now I'm gonna reveal a little secret, something that makes sense in my sewing room that you probably never thought of, and it is these books. Now, these may look like regular books to you, but they are not. They have a sneaky secret inside that keeps it nice and tidy, and you can tell from here that it's not, you know, pages, it's, an empty box <laughs> and I love these because I can store my instruction manuals and keep them in one place so all of my instruction manuals are in these books this one is for my instruction manuals for my cameras and other office equipment and like a printer and this one has all of my sewing machine manuals very very important i reference these especially for my cell right and for my serger quite often as well as the accessories for my serger because it didn't it doesn't have a little you know like most sewing machines have a little uh drawer or like you know um in the front of it sergers don't have that and so you just have to keep your uh, accessories separate like to change your needles and stuff so that's where i keep those in these books here and no one will ever know it except for you guys. All right, so the fourth thing in my sewing room that just makes sense is things to hold scissors. Like, I know we could just put them next to the sewing machine, but I really like to have a place for my scissors because otherwise they end up in the craziest places and I may not remember where that is. And so if it has a place, I always, even if I put it just on top of here, I always put it back here. And so what this is, is this was an old curtain. I do have a video for this. I will link it in the description box below. But I was just like, maybe if I make something, just like a sleeve, a little pocket for my scissors and some thread, a little pin cushion right there, then that'll be really cool to have next to each sewing machine. And I tell you, like, if this don't make sense, nothing makes sense. This makes so much sense for me. I also have one next to the serger. The serger one is different because it's next to the serger. It, it has the pin cushion and the place for the scissors, but it has a magnet next to it. And the reason I put the magnet is because I was always losing my tweezers. And if you know anything about sergers, you need the tweezers in order to rethread it. And so I wanted them always accessible to that machine. And so I put the magnet there. I never lose my tweezers anymore. So I think if anything makes sense, these definitely 
makes sense. And I have another option for you guys. On my standing desk table, the adjustable one, I also have some little clips that I got from Ikea. I will put a link to everything in the description box below. These are no longer sold at Ikea, but you can get them off of eBay. I clipped them to the table. They do have a place where you can screw it to the table if your table is not as thick as this one, but they fit really snug on that table. That's why I love them so much. And I'm able to just have a couple pairs of scissors over there and as long as I put them back where they belong, then they'll never be lost. And it works. And the fifth thing in my sewing room that just makes sense is something to hold a phone or a tablet. And that's what this little thing is. If you are into watching Netflix while you sew, great thing to have. If you are into watching YouTube, watching the tutorial and following along, hope you are. <laughs> then this is definitely very valuable. I made this, it's stuffed with rice. Um, you can stuff it with something else if you like. It has a pin cushion on the front and I can also use it as a weight, like a fabric weight. So it holds stuff down if needed. So yeah, it has multiple uses and definitely just makes sense to have in the sewing room and the fact that it can be moved around. So if I'm over here cutting, it's over here. If I'm over at the sewing machine, it's over there. All right. Now Next up is some type of cube storage. It's definitely a game changer. I've had it for a while and I have gotten rid of things, gotten other things because that thing didn't make sense and another thing made more sense. This is one thing that has been with me since this room was a formal living room and I just didn't realize how much sense it made in a sewing room. but all of these baskets, all of that storage, like all of that storage. Do you imagine like if you just sew with fabric, how much fabric you can fit in there or how many patterns you can fit in there or whatever you can fit in there. So like I'm an upcycler, so my needs are different. You know, I have some display up there. I have my Cricut Easy Press up there, an old serger that my dad got for my mom. That was her first serger. She gave it to me. It stopped working shortly after I got it, but it's not going anywhere because it's sentimental. Bins and bins and bins of stuff. This row has just a lot of different accessories. So like this one has like some of everything. The next one has all of my thrifted belts, piping, um, trims, different things like that. Um, number seven has cut up sweatshirts. So uh, sweatshirt material and the ribbing. If you don't know, ribbing is hard to come by. Like even buying it from the fabric store, if you don't have a really good fabric store, you're gonna have a hard time finding ribbing. Ribbing being the stuff that goes around the edge of your sleeve and at the bottom, at the hem on a sweatshirt. So a lot of times I will take it off of old sweatshirts and just keep it in there for when I wanna reuse it. And then number eight has some, like all of my camera accessories and different things like that when they're not in use. Down below the wooden ones have my screen printing stuff in them um, and some felt <laughs> in this one and some more camera accessories as well as some more screen printing stuff. So the two wood ones have the speedball paint for screen printing and stuff like that. And then down below is a very sneaky way to hide my kids' schoolwork. Like, you know, the stuff that they bring home and they won't let you throw it away. So <laughs> and it makes them feel happy and it's away. The other thing about Q storage that I really like is that you can also put stuff above it. So I've always had things displayed that are special to me on top of it and it just it's just a ton of storage. So cube storage thumbs up. All right, the seventh thing in my sewing room that just makes sense is a card catalog. And I don't know if it just makes sense so much as it's just like really, really cool, but it does have a ton of small things storage. So if you have a ton of small things that you wanna keep separate, then this is definitely for you. You can look on Facebook Marketplace and see if you can find one. Mine came out of an old school that was giving them away. And so yes, I did get it for free. I know, I know you guys are like, <laughs> like gagging, like, oh, I, I get it. Yes, I, I do know how much of an amazing thing that is. I got it from my parents in Chicago who both used to work in schools and my 
sweet, dear late husband, put it in the truck in one of our excursions there to visit family and brought it all the way back over a thousand miles to Houston, Texas. So um, yes, it's very special. <laughs> and I bought hairpin legs off of Amazon, attached them to the bottom side and now it is like a table and it also holds my Cricut and is a really good center for this little area right here. And underneath I do have a basket of like a wicker basket full of jean scraps. So it, it really does a good job of kind of anchoring all that stuff and holding stuff. So it's functional, it's beautiful, it's everything. All right, so let's talk about the recent addition to my sewing room that is just changing the game. And I mean changing the game because like throughout this recording, I have literally moved this thing and changed it 50 million ways. I was putting up some shelves in the recording room the other day, needed a surface, I rolled it into there. So yes, it's giving what it was supposed to give. It is giving. So right now I have two uh, sewing machines that I am getting ready to try on here. But this thing is from Michaels. It's $99 and it's worth every penny. If, you, if this is all you can get for your sewing room and you have very limited space, this is what I would recommend. Below, you can see that I have mounted on the cart. Uh, I think it has a 140 capacity thread holder and it's mounted with zip ties. I've done this before in my rental space. And I didn't say that before. That's how I mounted the pegboards onto the wire shelves. When I was in the apartment right now, that's how it's mounted. And that's how this is mounted to the cart. So yeah. I love having, that's one of the things I realized from the apartment. I love having low mounted like thread storage and different things like that. Something aesthetic on the wall, just everywhere. It's just really good. And if this is all you could have, this would be amazing. You could put your sewing machine right down underneath here. I am currently holding some extra tripods and I have been wanting a place to put these tripods um, because I do travel to do live streams and I've been wanting a place for this stuff for so long. And not only that, those are at the bottom, but I have extra capacity now. That's one thing about my sewing room that I really like to have when I am redesigning it. I don't want, as soon as I'm finished, it's full to capacity because something is gonna happen. You know, somebody's gonna give you something, something's gonna happen. And so what I think is going to happen is while I'm doing a project, all the things that are for that project, the scraps, everything can go into that particular uh, shelf and until the next project. So that way it's not in the way. And that's one big issue that I've been having. If you watched on TikTok and on Instagram, I shared me cleaning up my sewing room. It's just like, oh, just stuff in the way. So having rolling storage, storage that moves, like I can take down one side and just have one sewing machine. I can put down both sides and move the whole thing out of the way. I can, you know, whatever. And this can also serve as extra cutting table. I can put it up against the flexi spot table, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, put it up against my cutting table and now I have a super huge cutting table. That's a game changer. Like that is a game changer. So if you add this to a current table you have, especially cause that one I can move down up and up automatically to get it exactly the right height. It's just a game changer. Or get two of these, get two of these for 200, $200, that's it. And have yourself a whole sewing room, a whole sewing room that could then be taken down and pushed into a corner. I think I'm on to something. I can hear you. I can hear you screaming. I think, I think we're on to something. <laughs> all right, so next up, something that it just makes all the sense in the world to me. It's an absolute game changer. And what made me think about being flexible in my sewing room. And it is the FlexiSpot Kennel Pro Bamboo Standing Desk. I did in, you know, like a sponsored content for this table. And I was like, I think it makes sense to have a cutting table that you can stand and cut or sit and cut because I get tired of standing sometimes when I'm cutting at the table with the push of a button, like literally the push of a button. 
And like I said before, I can do it where it exactly matches the height of this table here, the uh, rolling cart table. So that is an absolute game changer for me. This thing, you can get it in different sizes. It doesn't have to come this big. Mine is the absolute biggest size um, because I wanted the biggest space for cutting because I also use it as my top-down recording space. You can see here, I actually have an arm of a piece that is used to wash dogs. Like they use it in veterinary clinics to have mounts for the dogs so they can't run off when you're trying to examine them and stuff. Got that on Amazon. <laughs> have it attached to behind the table and I can do my top down shots without, you know, without having to worry. So I also love this because I can move it to the center of the room and then that's where it was right before this. I can move it back to the center of the room and sit behind it and be able to look out the window when I'm just working on my computer and doing things like that. And then, like I said before, I can put the rolling cart table next to it and have a super big cutting space. It did come with a power strip attached to the table. That also, I charge my camera batteries. I can, uh, the other day I had a glue gun plugged in there. Whatever I need to plug in, you know, I can do it there. So it's, it's just, it's one of those things that it's just like the ultimate of ultimates. So yeah, I this definitely, definitely makes sense. It wasn't marketed as a cutting table, but it is the ultimate of all cutting tables. Lastly, let's talk about this series of drawers and carts that are underneath the table because they play a very important role. And this is not something that's like rocket science because I've seen it in so many sewing rooms. People love, love, love this cart right here or this drawer system from Ikea and I do as well. The only thing is, is that it's really deep. And so I also, in here, it's, great that it's deep because I keep my Cricut supplies, some regular office supplies, different things like that in this drawer here. Um, I did want one that was more shallow and that would recede into the wall. So I got another one, I believe it's the Halifax or the, there's one that starts with a W. I'll put the link in the description box from Amazon and I put it on little legs so that it's the even height with this. They're the exact same height now, but in that one is it's wider. And so that one has a lot more of my sewing stuff, like my interfacing, my zippers that I pull off of other garments. It also holds just some stamps, just the things, the all the things, you know the things, all the sewing stuff that we need, um, especially upcycling. We take so much stuff off of other garments and yeah, it, you know, like when you're an upcycler, you really like a cross between a sewist and a crafter. So it's like, you know, you have to have space for stuff. So that serves its purpose. And then very recently, my latest purchase for the room to make the room just ultimate to have ultimate flexibility is the rolling car and you can see it does not have wheels i didn't i took the wheels off so that it would more closely match the height of these but moving it is like literally a breeze and on here i finally have a space for my camera bag. Like I say, I travel to do live streams and I have a place for this. This was sitting on a surface. And what I found is that when you have things that don't have places, they stay on the surfaces. And so once you need that surface, all you can do is move it to another surface. And I just didn't want to that anymore. And so finally found a place for it, as well as my very first embroidery machine. I made a very rash decision to buy this embroidery machine right before Christmas. It was on sale, so I was like, why not? I'll try it out. Uh, <laughs> but it did turn out to be a good thing. I'll do a review on it to let you guys know if it's, you know, how it fares. I may have to get a different brand to have something to compare it to. It's just getting overkill at this point, but you know, you guys know that I don't 
keep them all. Sometimes I do giveaways, sometimes I will sell them. Um, you know, you can't keep everything. But I do, I do like to try things for you guys because when you're looking for something, and I've been in that position, when you're looking for something, um, you look trying to get the right thing for you, you don't wanna make a mistake. These reviews are like pivotal, like they're so helpful to help you make the right decisions. And then on the top, I have some more um, longer things that won't fit in drawers. So yeah, it's just really, really helpful to have that. And it also is what holds the little angle that allows me to do my top down shots. So yeah. All right, I hope that was super helpful for you guys. You guys know that I have gone from only having a like little area to taking over this, you know, whole space in the front of my house. And I am like eternally, eternally grateful to have this as a privilege, definitely. Um, but like I said, I know that there are things in my space that will help you no matter the amount of space you have, even if it's just a rolling cart or some of the things that I made for my space that didn't cost me anything because I reuse old curtains and different things like that. So let me know what you're interested in putting in your sewing space in the comments below and what videos you wanna see from me next. And I have other videos you to watch right here definitely go ahead and check those out and subscribe if you haven't subscribed and i will see you guys in the next one all right bye